outer space. There is nothing more unexplored, unknown, or deeply inspiring than this dark, infinite outer space. Humans look up at the sky and travel with the imagination on unimaginable journeys. We also dream of our passions, live for innovation. Working with MIT, we study the lines of non-extension of the human body to develop a perfect biosuit for the first astronauts that will reach Mars, the Red Planet. Now, from these new technologies and our racing experience, a new generation of motorbike touring garments has been born. From space to planet Earth. Made for the unlimited, no matter the road. We are ready to explore it. Dainese Explorer. Inspired by humans.
Hi guys, I'm Jack Miller. And today I'm going to be talking about all the things that keep me safe. My passion for motorbikes basically started uh, through my dad. My dad always rode. Um, he wanted to race, but uh, his family, through one way or the other, living on a farm, weren't able to afford it. So uh, he bought my brother a bike for my brother's fifth birthday, and I was uh, two, nearly three years old at the time. And uh, this is one of my probably earliest memories. I was stood at the gate crying on my brother's birthday, saying, please take me with you to, to, to ride the bike. And, uh, and I think from then, you know, then on, because pretty much from then on, uh, I was trying to ride every single day that I could. Enough so that my parents said, okay, now we had to move from the city to, to a farm. And once we did that, I was riding every day. So it started there. And, you know, I could be with friends. It could be, a, it didn't matter. I was alone or, or, or what, but uh, as long as I was riding a bike, uh, for one, I wasn't getting into trouble. And for two, I was uh, very, very happy. So uh, I think, you know, it's just something that, that I was, was born to do. Having a friendship or having, you know, people around you, especially happy people, you know, people who keep you in a, in a mentally a good state uh, is definitely one of the most important things you can do in our job because it's very easy. After a bad weekend or something like that, you're able, you, you're able to take a step back. It's, it's even better to have friends that are maybe not inside racing, but people who can take you back and they don't care whether you finished first or, or, or last on the weekend. They, are there to be your friend and just to, to, to hang out and have a good time. So for me, that's one of the most important things. I, for me, I'm a, a very social person, let's say. I enjoy to hang around with friends and uh, to, to have a good time. So I think it's definitely one of the most important things for me to also just to release stress, you know, go and have a laugh and just enjoy laughter and friendship. Also, you know, having a great relationship, not only on a crew chief, sort of level but also with your mechanics everything like that i think the biggest thing is to create a bond there of a bond you know friendship bond between your crew the guys that are working and you are trusting with your complete life i think that is the one of the most important things so that they are enjoying you know because it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies there's going to be bad days and you know i feel you need that relationship to help you bring bring you through to the next level and uh, to forget about the, the difficult days. So, uh, but not only that, also having other friends around the paddock, other riders uh, is definitely key for me. Um, I, like I said before, I, I enjoy being, a, I'm a friendly person. I, I enjoy friendship. I like to have a chat and uh, I feel I need this. It was difficult, you know, starting uh, MotoGP directly from Moto3. I, uh, you know, not, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the challenge, but uh, it was a difficult one. But uh, also the way that we did it, you know, coming through onto an open Honda, which wasn't really a, a, a competitive bike at all that year. And then, you know, step by step, year by year, getting small improvements on the bike. And also I feel myself improving as a rider as well. So it was difficult, but I embraced the challenge. I enjoyed seeing progression every week. I still enjoy seeing progression every week. I feel it's making me a better person, a better better competitor and a better athlete. So I think that's uh, one of the other things that, uh, that I really take out of it. I have many, many scars all over me. Uh, probably one of the most in the paddock, but uh, I, I look at them as a, as a way of learning uh, that I, I learned from them. But for sure, you know, ha having the best protection in, in, in the industry is definitely key to what we do because with the schedule, with the racing schedule, how it is now, and with also how high level everybody is riding, uh, you take a fall, you need to be back up and as close to, if not your 100% every time, because otherwise you, you can miss, you know, half the season or whatever, and uh, this, can, this can really put you back a long way. So the biggest thing is just trying to be 100% fit all the time. Uh, trying to not get any injuries. And one of the biggest steps in that is having the best protection you can get, which is Danny's. The, the, the way that the leather suits and everything have developed nowadays, it, it's, uh, you know, for one, having the airbag system was a huge step in, in terms of safety. 
you don't even think about your that you're wearing it anymore. It's uh, it's become so light and so malleable, let's say, so flexible that you can uh, you don't even notice it's there until you need to notice it's there and you feel it. So. For sure, having that is one of the best things that, that, that I can say. And another thing is, you know, just the way that the leather suit fits, you know, that nothing is moving when you're crashing, for example, and stuff like this is definitely have to be one of the key points, I think. It was a big one. <laughs> I remember more than I would like to, <laughs> let's say that. Oh, it was uh, one of these moments where uh, I was very lucky. Uh, I was able to, to jump off the bike or let's say crash the bike on purpose at the right moment because if not I would have hit the wall and the only way that I was able to get off the bike was by doing a front flip by grabbing the brakes so aggressive so uh, you can see most of the impact <laughs> was taken on my head but uh, I crashed at uh, well over 200 kilometers an hour hit a wall slid along on my head then hit a wall and was still able to get up 15 minutes later and uh, do a qualifying practice. So I have to say that uh, although the helmet looks finished now, it definitely did its job. That's for sure. I wanted to go like a 90s, you know, like motocross style helmet with the, the crown with the gold tips and that sort of thing, and the pink and blue, the light colors. So that was mainly the reason especially like the white on the pink, uh, like the splat. This is trying to look a little bit like the 90s motocross helmets. The way that the helmet is designed to go with the leather suit, uh, you get no vibration, no movement from your head. Uh, it's one of the biggest things. And then also, for example, when you sit up for braking in uh, Mugello or Barcelona, places where we are doing an access of 350 kilometers an hour, you don't have any wind. For one, coming through the visor, you you are completely sealed, and your neck, you don't get a sore neck at the end of the weekend, which is uh, normally a good thing, because uh, I've known it in the past from my experience and also hearing from other riders uh, about how sore their necks are come Sunday, and I always love to tell them that mine is not, not uh, in any pain whatsoever, so it's uh, quite nice. It's incredibly light, I mean, the weight, the helmet design, sleek, but uh, it doesn't take up too much. It's not too bulky. It's not touching, for example, the back of your neck when you're tucked in, trying to look through the corner. The, the weight is, uh, yeah, impressive, really, when you pick it up and you feel how light they are, but how, how much protection there is. And I mean, the visor as well, just to have that field of, uh, field of view. It's incredible, especially for when you're tucked in, you have a lot more at the top. Uh, you're able to see a lot more whilst tucked in on the bike. So with the AGV, you see we have the, the shape here. And the problem was always that the helmet comes down if you land on your head and hit right against your collarbone. Always, it was always in the exact point that the helmet would touch. As I touched on earlier, the noise in the helmet, you don't have much. Yeah, especially because you have sealed the visor so well. Um, and yeah, there's no movement. I run, I have a quite a big head uh, at the top. Here is, you know, more or less quite skinny. So I have to run really thick uh, cheek pads, but then I've had helmets in the past that have really pushed in because my hair, head is quite square shaped, let's say. So I'm able to, to, to have it fitting really well with just a couple of adjustments. It's incredible how, how well it really squeezes on my head. It's, uh, it's amazing nowadays that, uh, that the average customer for the rotor is able to buy the, the Pista GPR, which is identical to what, to what we are using in the MotoGP series with the FIM homologation, everything like that. I mean, the, the, the standards of, uh, of, of this helmet for the street is second to none. Well, yeah, Danny's used, you know, only the best quality kangaroo leather straight out of Australia. So of course it's a uh, strong, but malleable uh, product. It's, the biggest thing is the arms. The arms are, uh, you know, one of the key things for us. You know, we suffer a lot, uh, MotoGP riders with arm pump and stuff like that. And just to be have 
able to have arms that are as flexible and uh, let's say easy easy to bend uh, you know after 20 something laps on a MotoGP bike it's you definitely feel the difference that's for that's for sure yeah the the stretch panels for example through the back here to be able to have the stretch panels all the way up over the shoulder you notice things like this especially when you are trying to find grip hanging completely off the side of the bike and trying to pick the bike up and you are looking for that little bit of extra flex having the stretch panels all the way up and over the top of the shoulders definitely help i think for this uh, the suit itself you know is by far one of the lightest on the market even though we have a lot more let's say uh, different things that other manufacturers are not using for example the light that comes on when the airbag is deployed so that uh, you know if it's in difficult conditions you're able to be seen uh, when you separate from the bike so uh, this and along with the, the the elbow slider system and everything like that that is so easy to change this adds weight yet we are much lighter than everybody else and much stronger uh, the, the airbag system is incredible, how light it is, how easy it is to recharge and also the way that it turns on and off, you know, you never forget to turn it on because it's quite easy, you have to clip up your suit before you go out so you know it's always going to be on, so uh, that's definitely one of the key things and then of course the knee area and into the boot, you know, the, the leathers going over the top of the boot in terms of aerodynamics. It's one of the best we've tested in the wind tunnel multiple times, whether it be in Moto3 or in MotoGP. And by far, this system is so much better every time in terms of having aerodynamics over your feet, that your feet are much skinnier. I feel for sure more confident, more comfortable because nowadays the, the airbag system is so light and, and, and so flexible that you don't even notice it's there until it has exploded and by that time you are normally flying through the gravel so uh, you, you, you don't know it's there until it's already saving you so that's a good thing and I mean the, the system itself you wouldn't uh, for me it's one of the, the first things I do when I'm about to get on the bike is make sure I'm connected because when, when you had crashes without it and then you've had crashes with it you understand why you have it and you want it there just in case so uh, I think that is definitely one of the key points and uh, also like I said how light it is now it's by far the lightest airbag system on the market you don't even notice it's there in the leather suit and uh, yeah I wouldn't have anything else to be honest when when the D-Air activates you don't feel it I've done many tests in uh, in factories and stuff like that where we've set it off automatically and when it's like that you, you notice it boom, and you hear it the big pop of the bag but to, to be honest when you're crashing you don't even know what's going off you're just st standing there like that you, you you sort of don't remember it happening at all so uh but i've had it for example before as i'm leaving the seat of the bike in a high side moment which is never a good feeling as I'm leaving the seat and going quite high, as well, I was leaving the seat, the airbag exploded. So already in the back of your mind, as you're flying through the air, you think, at least I'm not landing completely on the, the ground alone. <laughs> I have some protection, so it's gonna be a little bit more, so. Since I moved to Dianese, before that, I was seven times on that side and four times on that side. And since I moved to Dianese, I haven't broken a collarbone since. First of all, the, uh, the titanium plates, I think, is more of an iconic thing from Dionese because I always, before I was wearing Dionese, I always wanted to wear it because of that iconic look, you know. But then once you look into it more and you really test them out for yourself, you understand the purpose of them. And the purpose is to, to not have any point, well, in the most important points of the, let's say, of the impact of the crash, to not have any grip. It makes so it's able to slide. But uh, you know the, the latest one, it's, uh, it's an evolution. It's uh, been a great step. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just looks amazing. The glove, as you can see, these ones are quite used, but still in good condition. The, uh, the glove itself is definitely, for me, the best one around. The protection, especially on the pinky, being is, uh, you know, if you ever meet any old motorcycle riders, generally when you shake their hands, they are missing the pinky and 
as you can see I still have both of mine so the job the gloves are definitely doing their job to have the the titanium protection over the knuckle and also over the top half of your hand is incredible because you have no idea how many times I've smacked my hand uh, and I've got many gloves at home with a lot of scratches there so you can tell that the, the, the glove has hit the ground and slid rather than hitting the ground and ripping and trying to, to break your hand so uh, but not only that you know feel is most important for us in uh, MotoGP especially with the carbon brakes and uh, the amount of feel that you get through these uh, the Dionys gloves is by far the best there is and like I said these ones are completely used but they still fit perfectly, feel perfect. A little bit of extra sweat inside them is perfect. Well, the boot, I mean, when we go back to iconicness, I mean, this is uh, another iconic thing from, from Dionys. They've been doing it for so long now, where the leather actually goes over the top of the boot. And, uh, I mean, for one, oh, you only have to look inside and see the carbon fiber in a boot. The flexibility of it is incredible, but yet the durability is there, it's so stiff. The uh, titanium toe sliders, again, another no-brainer, it's the strongest. You never have to change toe sliders ever. And uh, the boot itself is quite skinny compared to any anything else I've ever worn or anything else on the market, which is another big thing for us being at, you know, 61, 62 degrees, lean angle, everything touching the ground. The last thing you want is your foot to be jammed between the bike and the ground and having the nice narrow boot is uh, definitely a big thing for us. Uh, benefits of having the, 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 the leg of the suit actually go on the, on the outside of the boot is incredible actually how much when you see the difference on the, in the wind tunnel, how much difference it actually makes, how much closer your feet are to the bike, you're able to stay in, in behind the fairing a lot easier. And yeah, the safety of of it as well as you know nothing's going to be grabbing you from here uh, you know nothing's getting caught on your boots your boots are going to stay safe the zip for example the only way to close the boot is already tucked inside the leather so for your boot to actually come undone is is nearly impossible and they also work really great as a cup thank you for watching guys uh, remember to stay safe out there and uh, always use the best cheers